But first, interesting game last night. Certainly one that we all had circled on our calendars before the season. You had the Baltimore Ravens. You had the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Baltimore won the game 27-22. By the way, uh, th that last drive really pissed me off, to be completely honest with you, because Baltimore's up 20-16. to <clears throat> <clears throat> Tampa's got a fourth and goal from the eight, and Tom Brady connects with Julio Jones for a touchdown. If Tom Brady does not connect with Julio Jones for a touchdown, I get the score right for the second time on Thursday Night Football. So that, uh, that really kind of ticked me off. I'm not going to lie. But as far as the game itself, I think this was fairly predictable. You had a Ravens team coming in off a short week off a, a less than impressive win over the Cleveland Browns, to say the very least. Obviously, Baltimore has the better roster, the better coach, as, as much as like Stefanski, without a question, the better quarterback. But Baltimore this season has been the story of their year so far. They've been bad in the fourth quarter. And they start off last night very rocky offensively trying to get something going. They, you know, they got a field goal early on, but that was about all they had in store. Okay, Lamar Jackson seemed a little off. The running game wasn't able to get going the way we thought it would. And Tampa Bay, right out the gates, opening drive touchdown. They get a field goal later in the first half, and they seem to be humming a little bit. But the second half rolls around. Baltimore gets their act together. Tampa Bay completely folds, and the Ravens end up winning the game by five. But And I did pick the Ravens to win this game, but when I was when I was looking at it, again, I don't know why Tampa continuously is a favorite in every, all of these games. They're double-digit favorites in Pittsburgh. They lose. They're even bigger favorites in Carolina. They lose badly. Why on earth are they favored by two over a superior Baltimore Ravens team with the superior coach, John Harbaugh, and without a question, the superior quarterback, Lamar Jackson? The Ravens' second half, and this points to coaching, this points to the execution from their quarterback, who why people continuously doubt Lamar Jackson is, is, is beyond me. The guy is absolutely unequivocally a top 10 quarterback in the NFL as he held up that fan poster after the game. Give that man his money. He's going to get paid this offseason without a question. He's going to pull an Aaron Judge. Not break any records probably, but he's going to get the bag. Baltimore's second half drives. Touchdown, 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 field goal, kneel down. That's, that's phenomenal execution. By the way, you know, we, we could scoff at, the, say, the field goal, for example, but on that drive, right, they're up eight. Okay, they're just trying to kill clock. They get that big, long run. for. I think, I think it was Kenyon Drake who got him down there, and Justin Tucker, the greatest kicker of all time, as far as I'm concerned, hits the field goal, and Baltimore uh, goes up by 11 points, and that was too insurmountable for Tampa Bay. But I, I, I've talked enough about Baltimore, right? Like, they, we know what they are. We know what Lamar Jackson clearly is. I mean, last night, QBR of 62 on 0 to 100, had a pass rating of 105, 238, two touchdowns. Uh, he also ran for 43, averaging five yards a carry. Uh, Lamar Jackson is spectacular. We already knew that. But as far as Tampa Bay, this is a team that a lot of people expected, like they did the last two years, to compete for a Super Bowl, which – can't say it's 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 a it was a crazy thought coming in, right? Won the Super Bowl in 2020, had a great run last year that got halted by the eventual champions, the Los Angeles Rams, a season ago. But this year, and I'll, I'll sort of touch on for two minutes or less because I, I, you know, it's 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 a it, it's not a fun topic to discuss the whole Tom Brady marriage situation. But part of the reason that that I wasn't high in Tampa is because of the weird sort of off field dynamic with Tom Brady. Taking Wednesdays off again a couple weeks ago. We know that he attended his old boss, Robert Kraft's wedding. Uh, you have the situation where he uh, takes 11 days off in training camp, and he doesn't seem to have that same fire and vigor that we're used to seeing in the GOAT. Now, we see sort of why. Uh, anybody who's been through a divorce knows what, what that takes out of a human being. But Tampa Bay's defense is not what we thought it would be after the way they started the first two, three games. OK, Tampa's running game is the worst in the league easily without a question in terms of of yards per carry, in terms of uh, attempts. It's, it's been horrible. The offensive line we knew was beat up coming into the season. It is not impressed whatsoever. And the bottom line is this. As great as Tom Brady is, greatest quarterback of all time, greatest player in NFL history. We are now seeing the decline. I'm not saying he's washed. I'm not saying he's done. Russell Wilson's washed. We've seen through five games or six games, however long it's been, Russell Wilson has flat out sucked through, through his first six games in Denver. He wasn't all that great last year in Seattle. He wasn't great at the end of his 2020 campaign in Seattle. So we're starting to seeing this downward trend for Russell to the point where now he is washed. Tom's a different story. Folks, last year I thought he should have been the MVP. He finished second to Aaron Rodgers. Okay, threw for over 40 touchdowns, led the league in passing yards. He was tremendous. He was outstanding. Through eight games last season, 
Tom Brady had 25 touchdown passes. That's pretty good, right? This year, nine. So not even half of what he had a year ago to the first half of the season. Completion percentage, good, but he's not pushing the ball down the field when he has the likes of Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Scotty Miller has proved to be a solid uh, deep ball threat. Okay, we, we can blame it on a lot of different things. We can blame it on, on Bruce Arians being in the booth now uh, or being with the front office now as opposed to being the head coach. We can blame it on the running game. We can blame it on the O-line. This and this and this. Julio Jones not staying healthy. A-B being gone. Gronk being gone. We can blame it on a lot of different things. But at some point, when you are a guy who many, heck, I would argue everybody coming into the season, bare minimum, considered you a top five quarterback, when the NFL players said this summer, you are not only the best quarterback, you are the best player in the NFL. At some point, there's got to be a little bit of blame that falls at your feet. Now, I don't want to be brutal on Tom today because, you know, we know what's, what's, what's going on in his personal life. But not moving great in the pocket. The arm strength is still there. I've, I've never criticized that with Brady. Even his days in New England when people said he didn't have a great arm. I'm like, I don't know what y'all are watching. They just don't push the ball down the field that much in New England. Okay, the arm is still there. But the accuracy on deep balls hasn't been great. Uh, the execution of the red zone has been simply atrocious. I mean, you saw late in that game when they're down, uh, whatever it was, they were down 11, I think, at that point in the game. Right? They got a fourth and goal from the three. They're going to try and go for it, and they get a false start. And Tom's pissed off, and you've got all this commotion. Penalties killed Tampa last night. Blames on everybody. But when you are a guy we consider the greatest quarterback of all time, when you are a guy who the player said was the best player in the league coming in, at some point the blame's going to fall at your feet at least a little bit. Now, if you're Tampa Bay, if you want to look at, I guess, uh, any silver lining, your schedule isn't awful moving forward. Okay, now you got the Rams next week. The Rams haven't been what we thought they'd be. You got Seattle in, in Munich on a Sunday morning game. At Cleveland, they've disappointed, especially in close games in the fourth quarter. The Saints at home, at the Niners, that's a tough one. Cincinnati has, has really found the rhythm, although Jamar Chase is out for a while. You got at Arizona with that dicey secondary. You got Carolina again, that's a, re a revenge game after how they played. And they got at Atlanta, and for, for what it's worth, Tom Brady has never lost to the Falcons in his career. But if you're sitting there in your Tampa, I mean, again, once again, we saw the Tampa Bay Buccaneers turn into the Rockets. Okay, I mean, it's, it's, it's three and outs. It, it, it's, it's, run, it, it's, it's one, two, three, kick. Turn to the Rockets, one, two, three, kick. I think it was four times last night they had a three and out. Once they had a four and out. Bad execution, penalties, inaccurate throws by Tom Brady. Red zone was horrible. Defense did a bad job stopping the run against Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. I mean, you give up three in the first half, then you give up 24 in the second half. That's adjustments, but it all, it's also the defense not playing as well as we know they're, they're capable of playing with that kind of talent. This, this is what we've kind of grown to expect for the Buccaneers. Now, this is actually the first time in Tom Brady's career that he's two games under 500, which, you know, took 23 years to get to that point, but here we are. But for Tampa, it's, it's I've always said this about, teams that we consider, hey, are they a championship contender or not? And I've always said, if I've got more questions than answers, if I've got to say if more often than I'm confident, I can't consider you a championship team. I get that's Tom Brady. You know, everybody against Tom Brady. It's, it's the general rule in sports. But it's also general rule in sports. Father Time's undefeated. He's had himself a battle with Tom Brady. And another one with LeBron James, as we, as we see in the Nike commercials with Jason Momoa portraying father time, but he's going to win eventually. He gets all of us eventually. And Tom Brady is no different. Tom Brady is not washed, but he is in the decline. You know, Max Kellerman famously said six years ago about he's going to fall off the cliff. He's going to be a bum in short order and how that's probably one of the worst aged takes in history right up there with my Broncos going to win the Super Bowl take. Well, he's not falling off a cliff, but he is in decline. And that's, I, I don't know, through eight games, I don't know how you could possibly see any different. But as for the Ravens, I mean, you look at Baltimore's schedule moving forward, uh, they, they've got an opportunity to really get hot here. They got at the Saints, Panthers, Jaguars, Broncos, Steelers. Okay, and, and through the rest of the season, yeah, through the rest of the season, they face one team that's over 500 today. That's the Bengals, the last game of the season. Good chance that game decides the division. And possibly, you know, really, really good playoff scene. Could be the two or three seed. So 
If you're Baltimore, man, you have got to feel great about yourselves. All the fourth quarter losses, all this and all that. We've got a quarterback who's very much still in the MVP discussion. We've got a coach who's won a Super Bowl, a defense that has really found its way as of late. And our schedule is, is cupcakes from here. But if you're Baltimore, you should feel great about yourself today. If you're Lamar Jackson, you should be feeling even better about yourself today. John Rivera, my man, Fan Perspective Podcast. John Rivera says, let's go Jets. They got a big one this weekend against the New England Patriots. That is a very, very interesting game uh, that I'll predict later in the show. Uh, Jets, of course, coming in at 5-2, and two, but they have lost two very key pieces. Elijah Vera Tucker's out. Brees Hall, huge loss. He's out for the year. Uh, I believe it's an ACL tear. So, uh, But the Jets have been playing, playing good football. The defense has been great. Robert Sala, I think, is still at least in the running. Dable's obviously the favorite for coach of the year, but... Are we sure Salah isn't second or third? Pete Carroll's in the running. Like that coach of the year uh, race is going to be really interesting coming down coming down the stretch of the season because who, who'd have thought that the Giants would be sitting here at six and one, the Jets sitting here at five and two? Okay, if you did, if you went to Vegas, you said this was going to happen. Man, you can see in the future, and the rest of us can't because that's that's pretty remarkable on your part. Outside of that, nobody saw this coming. But it's going to be great uh, to see moving forward. Now. Again, we got all kinds of things to talk about today. Okay, we got NFL, got the game last night I just touched on. I will say this, though. I, I do want to, to touch on it for at least a couple minutes, or I, I should say at most a couple minutes because I don't want to spend too much time on it. Obviously, we're all aware of the fact that uh, Tom Brady and Giselle uh, have officially finalized their divorce. They both announced on their social media platforms. Uh, this explains, and I've been pointing to this, Swear to y'all, I've, I've been pointing this out since mid-June. I remember talking about it during the NBA Finals, that something seemed up about Tom. Didn't seem as as sort of um, fired up, if you will, as usual. Didn't have that same sort of energy that we're used to from Tom. Uh, he certainly said, we, we saw some of the close-ups of his face, of his, his frame. He seemed kind of gaunt. Um, just seemed out of it. You had the situation with training camp. I said, something's up with Tom. Now, this explains a lot of it. Um, end of the day, man, I, I feel bad for Tom. I feel bad for Giselle. I feel terrible for the kids because at the end of the day, the, the, the biggest losers in divorces are, are the kids because now, yeah, you know, obviously they, they both agreed to joint custody. So they're going to go back and forth between, uh, between their mom and their dad. So it's, it, it's, it's, it's a sad situation. Um, you know, a 13 year marriage coming to an end. Uh, we obviously wish the best for Tom Giselle moving forward. And, you know, a lot of people out there are going to say, well, they're rich, you know, they're, they're worth, Millions of dollars, they're, they're successful in their fields. They're very talented in their fields. Man, a divorce is a divorce. Now, you know, there's there's different circumstances that cause all of them, of course. But at the end of the day, this is it's never easy for anybody. And and we certainly wish Tom and Giselle the very, very best moving forward because, you know, this is, this is not easy. Thanks so much for watching the show on YouTube. Be sure to click that big red subscribe button and go check out the other clips and full shows of Carving It Up Live. Have a blessed day.